right so it is my humble opinion that all of this guy's good runs are complete bs we know that this a20 portal room has been cheated it was just coming out right before i started this recording however i think that's only the beginning i think his cheating goes all the way back to here with his sub 13 pb i don't think any of his sub 15s are legitimate and his actual pb is a 1624. This video is probably going to be pretty long and it's definitely going to be extremely dense, but I'll try to get through it as smoothly as I can and break it down as much as possible. And I'm not going to do a lot of editing. I just want to throw everything out there and then you can think what you want to think. Okay, so I want to start with this 820 portal room run, which he claims to have world record pace, getting a whole bunch of cloud and all for a while. Uh, we know this run is cheated. It's confirmed by the log files, which moderators have looked at. They say it is spliced uh, in two different sections, three different segments spliced together. However, I want to highlight some trends in this run because it's relevant when I'm exposing his other runs. So let's start in the beginning. There isn't much strange stuff in the overworld, except for the v at the very beginning, it seems pretty weird that he immediately, instead of punching wood or looking around in the logical direction to look around, which is in front of him, he immediately whips around and heads towards the shipwreck. He is looking here for a very short time, but he's already committed to this shipwreck. Watch it in normal speed immediate whip around hardly a glance at that area we're going straight to the shipwreck and a little later on we are going to make full iron tools leaving zero flint for flint and steel this doesn't make sense now some people who don't know what they're talking about have said well he's playing for a high roll he saw the ruined portal which he did and he's expecting to rip a light out of this ruined portal but here's the thing if you have a ruined portal, you don't make an iron shovel because you can get flint out of the portal and then you still have to craft flint and steel. Or you can get nothing out of the portal and then you don't have anything to make flint and steel with. So it just seems like this play doesn't make sense at all. But aside from that, the overworld is pretty reasonable and the really bad stuff starts when we get into the nether. All right, bang. We're gonna wait in for a bastion to load. It's loaded, 30 FOV, micro lens, bang, cool. All normal stuff. Now we have a bastion. What is the next objective? Find a fortress. Let's look for a fortress then. No? I guess we don't need to look. Let's get on top of this hill before we look for a fortress. No, nothing. Look, the entire backside of the nether, everything to his right, everything to his left, everything behind him is completely blind. And this is a guy who loves to look around. So I've got here one of his VODs. He's playing RSG on stream and he's going to enter the nether. And you will see a stark contrast to what he did in this cheated run. We pull up in the nether. We're going to micro lens because we've got a bastion. And then we're going to micro lens more for a second bastion. Nice to know where that is. Okay. Now we're going to look underneath here, get awareness of the terrain and our surroundings. We're going to look over here for a fortress or possibly the bastion over there. We're going to look a little more. We're going to boat down. As he's boating down, he's looking around at this area and this area, abusing planar fog to try to find a fortress. We're checking pie chart. We still haven't committed to a direction. We're just kind of messing around, still figuring out what we're doing. Still looking around. He's looking at this area right now. But we're not done yet. Here, he's going to go to Quake Pro. And then he's going to pull up with the whole 
JoJo style window stretch planar fog abuse and stand right here for 10 seconds, spinning in a circle, changing render distance, looking around the entire nether. Oh my goodness. But here, we don't see any vision whatsoever. Look at this. He barely sees anything over here. The fog is hiding most of it. He's not in Quake Pro. He's not looking at the left side of the screen at the very least. Zero vision of the nether. Instead, we're just going straight to the bastion. There's a lot of other weird movement, like he's beelining this chest rather than looking at the bastion, punching fire, focusing on movement over the hole. But I'm going to skip over much of this because it's not really worth the time to go through. And the big stuff happens when we leave the bastion. So, right away, throw a pearl. Now hold on just a minute here. Why are we throwing a pearl when we don't have any idea where we're going? Look at this. We don't have any vision on the left. We barely have vision in front of us because the, the fog is right there. But instead, we're just going to send a pearl there. And keep in mind, if we go back here and watch as he moves to the bastion, the area that he throws the pearl is the blind spot of the nether. He has no idea what's over there. But, alright, whatever. Send it. And now, we're going to approach the fortress. And this is where something else suspicious happens. He pulls up to this fortress. Now, you have no idea where the blaze spawner is. But obviously, this is your primary objective, is find the blaze spawner. The entire fortress is to the left, but we're going to commit straight through this four-way to a blaze spawner that's hidden behind the tree. No looking around whatsoever. And the reason why he does this is because if he looks left right here, there is another blaze spawner, clearly visible. And if you exit the nether at that blaze spawner, you have a portal which is in a different spot. And it, the eyes point to a different stronghold, which is not exposed. It's under a forest. Now, this is important, as I'm going to talk about his future runs. He's going to kill these blazes. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Now, exit the nether. We have six rods. We're going to do calculated. We're certainly not getting more blaze rods, because we only have nine pearls left. Exit the nether! Exit the nether, dude. Why are we going up here to build a portal? When I was analyzing this, along with K4 and several other top runners, Ninja Brain, some speedrun.com moderators, we figured that this sort of play, not building the portal on the spot, is just overcommitment to a scouted route. He's basically scouted this portal, scouted the distance here and everything, the angle and everything, and when the blaze goes behind the spawner, he can't improvise and build the portal there. He has to come back here and build the portal in the scouted spot. The distance check is scuffed. The angle is far, which is inherent inaccuracy in the distance. I'll discuss that more later. And yet, when he gets back in the nether, he's not going to hold the angle. See, look, what's our angle? No idea. We're just going off angle. We don't know where we're going. We didn't look at the angle before we started moving. We're just going. And he's going to get food here. No clue what the angle is. And he's even going to send a pearl. So something most people don't understand about Calculated is that it's very difficult. You can see a calculated run and you see, well, someone, they do calculated on top of the stronghold or in the stronghold. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. It's not blind travel. It's nothing crazy. He knows where the stronghold is and he goes there to exit the nether. But in reality, it's not that simple. Calculated is very difficult, even with short distances. But on long distances, when the angle changes 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, it's already inherently inaccurate 
no matter how skilled you are at calculated. Think of this. The difference between a 0.4 angle change and a 0.5 angle change is 500 blocks. Our method of distance checking just isn't accurate enough to nail the stronghold consistently at that distance. And yet, as you're watching him, every single one of these runs, he nails the stronghold. None of them are a high angle change with much accuracy. He nails it every time at long distance with scuffed distance checks and zero attempt to hold the angle through the nether as he's traveling to the stronghold. And apparently this is one of the splices. He's going to exit the nether. He throws two eyes because I don't know why. I think he's bad. I will talk about how he's a bad player later. And we're going to be right on top of an exposed stronghold. So here we go. We're on a run. We've got an exposed stronghold. And what are we going to do? We're going to go in third person. We're going to shake. We don't need to look at the stronghold and figure out where we're going. We'll just look behind us. Shake around. At this point in a run, every single runner is looking at the stronghold, figuring out where they're going. They're also going to boat around to the other side of this landmass to the right and look for more of the stronghold or even an exposed portal room. But Floby does not do this. He's going to go straight in to this area. And guess what's in this area? Every single one of his runs, he beelines the portal room. And oh my goodness, watch this in normal speed. Why are we going here? You're entering an exposed stronghold. And you see some of the stronghold and you don't see the portal room. So your first objective is to get back to the starter staircase. You should check rooms around you as you navigate back to the starter staircase. But you certainly don't want to commit to any direction and lose time. And if you were to commit to a direction, this is the worst direction to commit to. He's already seen the stronghold over here, and he hasn't seen the portal room. It makes no sense to look here. Watch this in slow motion now. No portal room, no portal room. It's on his screen for a very, very short time but it's completely impossible to see at normal speed. And now, we haven't seen the portal room, but we're already fully committed to this direction instead of navigating back to starter staircase. All right. On to the next run. All right, so with that in mind, I think it's logical to now look at his PB. You're going to see that this seed makes zero sense to play right off the bat. Most runners have already reset. He saw a shipwreck in the ocean, but the ocean looks terrible. There's no nether entry, and he has to spend 15 seconds running to a tree, which makes this slow. Now, some runners would play this. Some runners would. Maybe Cube would play this. But every runner, at the very least, even if you play this seed, you're thinking about resetting right now because it does not look good. And the reason why that's important is because... In just a second, he's going to get six iron from the shipwreck. If you weren't resetting before, you are definitely resetting here. There is no nether entry anywhere in sight. No nice looking magma ravine with an opportunity to do flintless. Six iron is all you have. And what he's going to do, though, is go down into this cave, randomly find some magma, and do a wood light, which is just crazy. It's completely forcing a bad seed just so he can play a godlike nether. This is not good resetting. It's not indicative of good play. And something very important when calling out cheaters is look at their reset efficiency. Some runners can get lucky even if they reset poorly, but you do not see runners cranking out tons of times. And apparently this guy cranks out pace like crazy. He has two sub-12s. And he has a whole bunch of sub-15s. And all of that is with bad resetting? Yeah, sure, dude. Sure. Let's skip ahead a little bit to the nether. 
and I want to highlight something important here. So, remember how he built his portal in a weird spot on this 820 portal room run. And we believed that that was just committing to a scouted route. And he was unable to improvise in a real run. He's going to do the same thing here. Look at these blazes. These blazes are shooting you as you're mining the chalice. They're completely free. Every single runner in the game is killing these blazes right now. Look at this. They're sitting there. They're free. Open terrain. Plenty of room to run around and dodge fireballs. And you're low on food. So you certainly don't want them hitting you as you're sitting still mining gold. But nope. If he's routing this seed, he's just thinking, okay, I'll go to the Bastion, I'll get my trades, then I'll go to the spawner. That's my route. And he's completely unable to improvise in a real run. Now, if we skip ahead all the way to the fortress, we're going to see some more hilarity. All right, we got some blaze rods. We're going to mine out the spawner instead of blaze betting, which is, again, terrible play. Somehow this guy is a good player, despite doing all sorts of stupid stuff. And we're going to distance check here because we have 20 obby. We'll do calculated. Cool. All right, so walk out of the portal. You got your eyes. Bang, do your distance check. He's still moving, though. As he throws his eye, he still has momentum in this direction. Watch it nice and slowly. I'll go frame by frame. He's still moving. He's still moving. He's still moving. The eye is thrown. He's still moving. Who cares what the angle is? It's totally screwed. Who cares? He has no idea what the real angle is. And precision is extremely important when you're doing calculated, especially at this distance, because this stronghold is like 2,000 blocks away. He's also not on 30 FOV, which makes it extremely difficult to get any precision. He should be on 30 FOV with the normal crosshair using the perfect travel kind of setup of looking at the eye. But instead, he's just Tokyo drifting, throwing on the move, not low FOV. This is even worse. Look at this one. Throw the eye, move to the side. What is this? Dude. Let's watch it again. Bang. Throw the eye. Standing still. Okay. Now get the angle. Nah. Move to the side. What are you doing? And then back to the other side. And he tries to correct it. But he gets an angle of 63.3. These angles, 63 was his first angle, and 63.3, they're actually diverging. They're going away from each other. You want the eyes to be pointing to one spot, which is the stronghold, obviously, and then you figure out how far the stronghold is. But these lines are going away from each other. They never touch in front of him. That's how bad this distance check is. Oh, my God. He has absolutely... Not the slightest clue how far this stronghold is. Not the slightest clue. But we're going to nail it. Right in the nether? All right. Our angle is what? 63? Let's go that direction. And did I mention he made four or five gold pickaxes here? So he has the ability to mine through a wall. All right. Let's go. Where are we going? Nah, straight the other way. Let's go this way. Why are we going this way? Well, because the terrain just happens to open up at the very end of this fortress into a nice clean ravine. We can use our gold picks in certain spots and mine straight to where the stronghold is. Watch this. Yeah, nice convenient ravine there. We can use our gold picks and go dead straight. No clue how he's following the angle here. He's just going straight. He's just going. Not even close. What even is the angle, dude? Who cares? We're going to get to the top of this thing. 
and bang. All right, we're at good coordinates. Let's send it here. Really? Why would we pearl this far? We're at very far ports. This is pretty close to the edge of the ring. Fails to build the portal, and boom. What a dumb location to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight in the stronghold. And where are we going? Remember how thoroughly he checked each direction in his 820 blind? He was already committed before going back to starter. Well, no, we're not even going to thoroughly check. We're going to go straight back to starter staircase. What's over here? To the left. What's to the right? No idea. What's to the left? What's to the right? The portal room could be there. No. Left. Right. No idea. We're going back to starter. Continue on. Nothing to the right. We don't care. Going straight back to starter. No idea what's down there. Alright. Now we're at the starter. Guess where we're going? Anyone who navs a stronghold knows that the stronghold is busy. They note as they're coming back to starter staircase that there's a whole bunch of garbage over here. Where do we not want to go? Over here, down a straight corridor, no early branching, down a dark turn, in the last place you want to be, no looking at any other direction, and we're just going to find the portal room. Yeah, okay, man, okay. Be lining the portal room every single time. We're just getting started. We are just getting started. Let's go to a second sub-12. All right. So this one, the overworld is pretty reasonable. He's going to go to the shipwreck. He's going to get his goodies. Now there is one weird thing. He talks right here. He says aloud. I need a light. He needs flint. So, he needs to check for gravel in this ravine. Most runners, they would swim, they would look at the top of the ravine, all the way around, maybe even swim up and down the ravine, then move to the middle of the ravine, look around, and then move to the bottom of the ravine and look for gravel. But we're just going to go straight to this gravel right here. Because, I don't know, we just get lucky, I guess. High roll on gravel placement. Sure. Now we'll enter the nether. This is the one run that we can safely confirm is not seed injected. And look at how he behaves differently from his other runs. Now I haven't shown his other runs yet. But this is the only run where he pulls up. He thoroughly checks every single direction. He's going to pull out the Jojo window stretch planar fog abuse like he did on stream. And he's going to check everywhere. Okay, cool. Let's get to the Bastion. And by the way, he sees the fortress on the way to the Bastion. Because he's actually looking. How about that? Alright, so we play the Bastion. Awkward Bastion route, but it works. We're playing good gap stables all the way down the left side, which is a pretty garbage place to be because it's very separated from everything, but it's fine. And we're going to get a little more piglins from the top. This is a good play. Throw the gold. And now we're going to wait on trades. This is important. So he has everything he needs right now. Except for obsidian. And this guy, he all out forces 20 obsidian. Presumably, this is because you can't just travel to the stronghold without knowing where it is, or at least having any reason of knowing where it is. So to cheat, he's going to use calculated as his excuse, and he's going to force 20 obsidian that hard. But this is a case where it makes absolutely zero sense to force 20 obsidian. So we're waiting for 10 obsidian. If you were really, really forcing 20 obby, you'd be gone by now. Just get the rest of the obsidian from chess. Why are we waiting here? But no, we've got 10 obby. We're going to go. Okay, this is fine. Now, every runner leaves the Bastion here. We have 10 obby. We're in stables. We have low health, low food, no gold armor. It is a risk 
to go through stables looking for obsidian, and it's a time loss. <sighs> well, we're going to run away from a piglin. We're going to kill the piglin. And then we're going to go all the way back through the bastion instead of leaving like he should have. And instead of checking the chest that's to his left here or checking chests that are above to his right here, he's going to go all the way down here to the place that doesn't make sense to go to. And guess what's here? Yeah, 20 obby. Bang. Now we're gone. It makes zero sense. It makes absolutely zero sense. But it gets worse. So, first of all, he plays bad. He loses a whole bunch of time here. Because he's not a player with good decision making. And he gets to the blaze spawner. He makes a shield. Blah, blah, blah. Plays the game. Cool. All right. Let's blind travel here. Look at this. So, we're in an ocean cave. We can't really distance check. So, we're just going to throw one eye. This is totally normal, you know. This is what you do when you're in an ocean cave. And you have 20 obby. Just send in, in one direction, no distance check, because a distance check is just a waste of time. Better to play for a high roll. Okay. Now, he's going to get the rest of his rods and head out. It's around here, or at least as he's moving. Let's watch this. The most important thing here is the angle of the stronghold. That is the only information he has. He doesn't know the distance. So we have to hold the angle through the nether. The angle was 166, but no, we're not following that. We're just sending it. Look, look for 166 on his F3. Nothing, nothing, nothing. He's not holding the angle. He's just going willy-nilly wherever he wants. And it was just a few seconds ago that he said, I think I hit the blind with no clue how far the stronghold is. So he's going to send the portal here because he thinks he hits the blind. He has some information we don't know. And guess what's right here? Bang, exit the nether. Bang, throw an eye, whip around, expose portal room right in front of your face. How about that? Isn't that convenient? I think I hit the blind. Yeah, sure, dude. Yeah, sure. Oh, next run. All right. So this run, oh, it's this one. Oh boy. So this run is going to be a mapless treasure run. He's running around. He has terrible tree proximity. There's a shipwreck over here. And he's going to check for mapless treasure on 30 F of V. It's not a good play, but back in July 13th, sure, maybe you do this. Okay. This is fine. Now, he sees the spike. There was a shipwreck there. But he's going to keep looking for mapless anyways. He says, I think there's one here. Okay, sure. Well, look at this. This is weird. This is the time when you go to 30 F of V and you look straight up to confirm if you're in the right chunk for buried treasure. And the idea is if you're low enough that the sub chunk you're standing in is rendering the buried treasure, then you'll still see a spike while looking straight up. He stands here and he doesn't get a spike. But he knows there's a buried treasure here. So what is he going to do? He's going to move. And ah, yes, there's the spike now. So then he digs and he gets the buried treasure. Okay. Now he has to run all the way over to these trees. And then he's going to find another entry. All right. So... Bang, nether spawn. We got a bastion loaded. Let's find it. Fortress in front of his face. We'll go to the bastion. All of his play makes sense. He runs double, triple chest stables. There's nothing unreasonable here because it's a very linear seat. There's no real opportunity or reason to cheat. Let's skip ahead all the way to... Calculated. All 
All right, here we go. We're going to exit the nether. Bang. Sub-8 blind with five rods. And we'll do calculated. So he throws an eye. Again, not 30 FOV. This is an inaccurate distance check. And second eye. Again, not 30 FOV, and he gets a 0.7 angle change. As I mentioned before, a long distance is already inherently inaccurate. You really don't know much about the stronghold's location. You know within about 200 blocks. Okay, sure. Well, as he's sitting here, he's going to type out the exact location of the stronghold. Or at least he's going to say it aloud. There's another one where he types it out in chat. That's what I'm thinking of. So, as we're going here, no attempt to hold angle. And we're just going to go exactly where the stronghold is. Now, here's the issue. He's got piglins on him here. He wants to get to the specific location where the stronghold is, but he can't. And, man, he really wants to get here. Even though there's some inaccuracy, he doesn't want to send it. He wants to get to exact cores, but eventually he realizes that there's no way he's going to get exactly where he wants to go. So he's just like, ah, screw it. We'll send it here. Now, this is so weird, dude. Watch. Watch this. Death reset. Death reset, backseat Tega. All right, let's find the stronghold. I think I need to all right, uh, I think I'm a bit off. I think I. I think I'm a bit off. I need to go a bit more this way. I think I need to go a bit more this way. Huh? How do you know? Okay, so we'll see. He doesn't have an idea. The stronghold could be 200 blocks behind him because of how inaccurate his distance checking is. That way. That way. Throw an eye. Uh, yeah. Already looking in that direction. Ah, yeah, that's where we're going. I should be fairly close though. I should be fairly close. <sighs> All right, next run. Oh no, it's this seed. This seed is so bad. It's so obvious. Everybody resets here. So what he's going to do, he has no trees nearby. Tree proximity is terrible. He has a bad looking ocean. And he has a food wreck here. This is a bad shipwreck. He's going to swim to it. Horrendous reset efficiency. He's going to swim to it because he really wants to force this seed. Everybody has already left the seed. Oh yeah, rip a buried treasure. You're hoping to swim to a shipwreck with no trees nearby and find a buried treasure to swim to it? No nether entry in sight. Not even another entry. Oh yeah, let's just let's just get this treasure real quick. Okay. The seed is completely forced, but sure. Whatever. He's a terrible resetter. He's just lucky, I guess. <sighs> let's move on. He enters the nether. Nothing unreasonable. Goes into cave. Blah blah blah. Makes his portal. All right, nether spawn, bastion loaded. Let's find the bastion. There it was. Bang. All right, now we look for a fortress. This is weird. So for starters, he's going to thoroughly check in stark contrast to several of his other runs. Thoroughly looking around for a fortress. He's going to look again at the top of this hill, I believe. Yep. Looking for a fortress over here, fortress over here maybe. But he doesn't see it. Okay, so he's thoroughly checked that direction. Now watch what he does when he leaves this house. Oh, this first. Okay, so. There are chests that spawn in the lower section of housing that have generic loot tables. Okay, they have obsidian, string, gold, blah, blah, blah. And he is especially looking for obsidian. These chests spawn in sections 100% of the time that have certain identifiers. The sections do not spawn 100% of the time. The chests in those sections do. 
So he needs to look for these sections with certain identifiers, which I've outlined in one of the videos on my channel, okay? So he's checked the middle chest. Now, he's got to check the other chest. Look around and try to see one of these identifiers. Watch this. He's not looking at all. He's not looking. There's a chest up here. He's not looking. He's not looking. He's going straight to this. No obsidian. And then, immediately after that, we go up in here. Bang, there's a chest. How about that? Oh, but there's more. We go to the other side, which we really haven't looked at. And we're just going to find a chest in here as well. No use of the identifiers of these sections. No looking around. Just beeline after beeline after beeline. Straight to it. Now, we're going to leave the Bastion. Okay. So, we got our obby. Which direction are we going to go to look for a fortress? We've already checked behind us and to the right. Thoroughly. That's all we were looking at as we came into the nether. The most logical direction to go is straight ahead here. Right here. But instead of looking in this direction, he's going to send a pearl down here. This pathing does not make sense. He's looking around, but he's only looking here where he's throwing the pearl. He's already committed to this direction. And where does he go? He goes backwards. Backwards in the area that he already thoroughly checked for a fortress. Why are we going here? More weird pathing. We're going... Oh my god. Looking at pie chart. Going in a direction we've already looked in. Throwing a pearl. Fully committed. And guess what's over here? Oh yeah, a fortress that we just didn't see before. How do we know that was there? I don't know, dude. We just got lucky. We just went in the right direction. That's it. He's just lucky. This is another calculated run. This is the one where he types out the coordinates. We're going to throw an eye. Oh, this is bad. All right. We got our angle. Cool. 114.1. Okay. Now let's go to the side. Here's what I want you to do. You're an RSG runner playing the seed. You're doing distance check. You're going to look at this crosshair. Center it on the eye, and then look at your angle, okay? That's what I want you to do. Look at the crosshair. Look, look, look. As soon as it stops moving, look at the angle. Stops moving. Oh, the angle's gone. Hold on, look at it again. Look at the crosshair until it stops moving. Look at the angle! Oh, it's gone. He didn't get this angle. There's no way. Watch for how long the angle is displayed on screen. Look at the angle now. Stare at it. 113.3, 113.4, it's fluctuating, and it's gone already. No idea what the actual angle is. All right. But somehow, just like every single other run, with far distance and a terrible distance check, no idea what the second angle was, we're going to nail the stronghold. We're even going to type out course in chat. Now we're just going to send it. No idea what the angle actually is. We're not holding angle. We're just going to chords. Normally, you try to hold an angle and estimate how far you need to go, but he's just traveling straight to coordinates. Bang. He builds his portal in this spot. And guess where we're going to end up? Very close to the stronghold. He's got to dig up here. He's got to come out. And now... Everybody does a distance check. The stronghold could easily, easily be 300, 400 blocks away. Do your 17 and a half blocks to the side. Do your distance check. Estimate the distance for triangulation. But no. We're going to go to the side here. Why are we doing this? Well, just watch. Go up here. Look in this direction. Oh, yeah. That's why we threw the eye over here. Because we hit the calculated, just like every single time. Let's do a stronghold nav check, eh? Watch this one. In the stronghold, there's a turn right. 
and there's a hidden room to the left. Okay. Well, this is a little edgy, but sure. We'll go here. Now, look in this direction. This direction doesn't make sense to look at, but the portal room could easily be behind here. This is away from any possible middle generation, away from any of the busy stuff in the stronghold. We're not even checking. Just a slight glance, and we're sending it this direction. Oh yeah, we're going to get this chest. And we're going to keep going. Everybody turns left here, if you're going this way. Because that's a five-way. That's more branching. It doesn't look that bad if you go straight away from all the busyness. Good chance for a portal room to be there. But now we're ignoring it. Who cares what's to the left here? No idea. We're going to go this way, because we feel like it. No checking down here. No checking down here. Let's go to this specific spot. What strange stronghold nav. And beelining the portal room as usual. Good job, dude. Oh, boy. Yeah, this oh, one is... This one's pretty bad, too. The overworld is completely fine. He sees the shipwreck. It's a linear. No reason why scouting or... Any extra information would help you out here. All right. Let's enter the nether. Bang. Okay. This one's going to be really bad, folks. Hang on tight. So. Spawned in. There's a bastion loaded. Right about there. 30 FOV. Find the bastion. Okay, cool. What's our next objective? Find a fortress. Look around. Look, he's he's at a decent Y level. He's at an open nether. Look for a fortress. Look around. Oh my god, dude. Look at all the vision that's missing to the right. All the vision that's missing behind him. He doesn't have the slightest clue. Instead, we're going to craft a gold pick where it doesn't make sense because you might want that gold armor. And we're crafting a gold pick here because we're going to dig through a wall. How do we know we are going to dig through a wall up here? I don't know. He just has incredible intuition, I guess. We're going to dig through a wall to the bastion. It makes sense to dig with a gold pick here. But it doesn't make sense to craft the gold pick so early. As if anticipating that you're going to be digging through this wall. And now we're in the bastion. And what do we have? Housing. Lava housing. Interesting. Well, we're committed. I don't think he's noticed the lava housing yet. We play, we play, we play. And it's this point that he exclaims, Oh my god, lava housing. Oh no. Okay. So everybody resets here. Everybody. You have a bastion that you had to dig to. You have... No idea where the fortress is. And now you want to play top-down lava housing. Look at the time. It's going to take him... It, it takes about a minute. He almost dies. It takes about a minute to clear out lava housing and actually get piglins trading. He's still trying to clear it out. It's 520. He's still trying. And it's only... Huh. Nice. It's only just now. This is like a minute and a half after we were at the top. It's only just now that we barely start some scuffed trading. You are insane to play this seat. He, he just really wants to force this for some reason. I don't know. He just has some incredible seed intuition, fellas. Incredible seed intuition. He's going to go all the way back up top. Which makes no sense. Look. Every runner here. You pop out of this hole. And right to the left. You dig down two blocks to check a double chest. Good chance for obsidian. You know? And you're right next to the trades. You can save some time. Search your inventory. Etc. But instead of doing this. He's going to go all the way back up top. To the top of the bastion. This makes zero sense. But why is he doing it? Well. There's obsidian here. Yeah, that's right. He needs his 20 obby so he can pull off this BS fate calculated. There we go. There's our obby. Okay. Now we'll go all the way back down. 
he never checks the double chest right outside of here. Never. But we are going to go out there, okay? So we have no idea where a fortress is. We're at eight minutes already. We're buried inside of a wall. We didn't even look around the nether. And what are we going to do? We're going to pick up our trades. And not checking the double chest. We're just going to leave. Out the bottom. For all he knows, this is completely buried. It makes no sense to go here. But oh yeah, check that out. Wow. There's a fortress. How about that? I'm so lucky. I got another fashion. He's saying as he's running the seed. Oh no, I got another fashion. I got another fashion. How about that, dude? Good job. Good job. He plays the fortress. And yeah, we're going to do calculate it again. Guess what happens? At this point, it'll be no surprise to you. Bang. Do our distance check. Again, not 30 FOV. Leaving the F3 screen, F3 screen open. Inaccurate crosshair. And he's going to get about a thousand blocks of distance. Which is not that accurate of a distance check. If it was, you know, three degree angle change, then you really know where the stronghold is. But with a low angle change... It's impossible to tell. He's not looking at his angle as he's going through the portal. The angle is like 23. He's not looking at his angle through through the portal. Everyone who does calculate it, you get your angle. As you're going through the portal, you look at that angle. And as soon as you come out in the nether, you try to get your bearings on where you're going to go to hold that angle. Some runners will even keep their screen on that angle, 23 degrees and hold that all the way there. But he's going to go with this mindless pearl off to the side. It doesn't make sense to pearl here. The terrain looks completely closed off. Looks good to go over here. Looks good to go around here. But we're going to go down this hole. And this is a very convenient hole that takes us to a very convenient spot. All right, we're at good cords. Let's build the portal. Right here, where you're standing. Build a portal. What is this? What even is this? Why is he building the portal here? In this very specific spot. It doesn't make sense to build a portal here, but he does. He says, this is only savable with a stronghold blind or something like that, even though it's calculated. And guess what we get? Bang! How about that? And you know what's oh so convenient about this specific spot? If you go here, we're going to go straight back to starter and we're going to beeline the portal room. Bang. Okay, hold on. Once again, we didn't even check any direction. We didn't check behind us. What's over here? Could be a portal room. What's behind and to the left? Could be a portal room. We don't know. What's to the left? What's to the right? What's down here? Ah, screw that. Bang. No checking whatsoever. And now we've got one more run. The sub-13 from quite a while ago. Alright. This run... Once again, we're going to play a bad overworld. This is in May. It's You reset for sub-3 entries, but you play a little worse overworlds than you do now. But look at this. He has terrible proximity. He has to get wood and then run all the way to this ocean, which he has zero vision on. But he's just going to full-on front load, commit to the seed. Gets wood there, goes over here, gets his trees... Blah, blah, blah. We still have zero information about what's going on in this seed. And we have already committed an entire minute to it. Now we're going to look for a shipwreck, right? Get over this edge. No. No, 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 no. We don't need to look for a shipwreck. We're just going to look for buried treasure with a very scuffed method. He could be looking at the entire ocean. Look at his vision here. This is as much vision as he gets. 
right here. No clue if there's a shipwreck on the seat or not. And we're already fully committed. We're going to look for buried treasure. Right here, we have a mob spawner and a chest on 2RD. Reset. There is no treasure here. Let's leave the seed. We have a false positive. Go next. But instead, we're going to run over here so that, bang, a chest loads, the spike increases, and we know we've loaded a buried treasure. It makes no sense. It makes sense to just randomly guess once you see the spike load in, but it makes no sense to play the seed or to check for treasure on the seed or to path the way he does. Now, everything makes sense here. And others normal. The seed is very linear. Nice and clean. No reason to cheat. But he doesn't get 20 obsidian. He only gets 10. Okay. Let's go to the blind travel here. Got our rods, we're going to blind. All right, send it. Negative X. This is where we're going. This makes sense. Hold on. Some runners, you're a little crazy. If you want to really play for high rolls, you would blind at the edge of this fortress. Okay? Good opportunity to blind. But most runners, this is fair, they would throw a pearl. They would throw a pearl over here to try to get a little more distance, try to get to average coordinates. Okay? It makes sense. Bang. Build the portal. Look at our quartz. Negative 220, 25. This 25 is inconsequential, but negative 220, perfect quartz for blind travel. It Top runners playing aggressively for high rolls, they would feel like they've gone too far already. They would want to be building the portal at maybe 200 or even 190. But what are we going to do? We're going to continue. Every runner is building the portal right now. Everybody. But instead, we're going to go up this hill... To worse coordinates, this is a time loss, bonking up this hill, and we're going to go an extra 30 or so blocks than we should have, and send it right here. Okay. Well, guess where we're going to come out at? Pretty much right on top of an exposed stronghold. Now, he does a little mouse shake. Look at this. There's no way he sees the stronghold. You can't see anything until here. This is when you can barely make out potential, a potential shape of the stronghold. I know the video compression is a little awkward on YouTube, but still. There's no way he sees this before he does the shake. Just makes no sense. Bang. Now you can see it. And because he's a bad player, we're just going to sit at the portal waiting for the eye to drop and let it go all the way down this ravine. Now, what are we going to do? Let's figure out how to deal with the stronghold. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're just going to look around and shake like a total idiot. And then instead of plotting where we're going to go, we're just going to send it in this random spot. When everybody goes back to the starter staircase here, because you don't see the port room. The port room's probably buried under the island or under the ocean floor, and you need to navigate this. So instead of boating over here and digging closer to where the starter staircase is, he's going to dig in here. This random spot, far from starter. And guess what's here? Come on, bro. Once he gets down the ladder, bang, there's the portal room. Yeah, I think that was everything. This is the opinion of not just me, but also a lot of top runners. We've gone through all of his sub-15s. We've compiled this document highlighting every little tiny thing that just looks wrong in all of his runs, which I didn't even follow that closely. I probably missed a whole bunch of things. We've gone through over two hours in call with top runners together and a couple moderators analyzing this talking about every little thing and it looks so so bad everything just adds up together plus 
with absolute certainty, we know that this run is cheated. And in that context, I think it's pretty clear every single one of his sub-15s is also cheated.